Today we're going to find out what's in your toolbox. Um, I have a number of different toolboxes, including some items that I kind of put on the wall. So um, today we're going to talk about my plumbing bag and what we have in here. Uh, I have a lot of extra junk left over from some different plumbing jobs, but we'll talk about some of the tools that probably should be in um, a DIYer's plumbing bag. Let's get started. So I keep things in an old um, bag that had some quarter cable drills and set in there, and it's a pretty sturdy bag, so it holds everything pretty well. Um, one thing that you would use pretty general that I don't keep in there because this is a general tool that I keep in my regular toolbox are a set of channel lock pliers. That'll adjust to some different pipe sizes that you may need to hold on to or some things that are too tight for your hands. This here is a hand auger and it's good for unclogging drains um, in pipes, in your sinks, kitchen sinks of that sort. This will kind of feed down into the drain and you'll be able to twist it and hopefully unclog any um, clogs that you might have in the drain itself. That's something that you should have. A little bit different than this giant one. This here is a closet auger, meant for a water closet or a toilet. You can see that it's not quite as long. This is probably about 25 feet when it's all the way out. This is probably somewhere along the lines of six or so. And this will come out and you will feed that down into the toilet and you could adjust it by holding on to this. That will feed it and that will change the length in and out. And of course, you can spin it much like the other auger itself to hopefully clear out any major clogs that you might have um, in the toilet. Most clogs in the toilet, hopefully you can fix with a plunger, which I don't keep in my bag. We kind of keep that um, in the toilet. So you should have a plunger as well as a closet auger if needed. Um, I have a couple of old uh, propane tank hookups. Yeah, plumbing is involved when we're dealing with gas as well. Um, I don't think the general person should have that, but I have some extra parts if need be. Um, I have some old flexible pipe from a job that I did. This looks like it's probably about quarter inch pipe um, or something pretty thin, which is not really common. I have a couple other small tools to clean out. Um, some drains and maybe the sink or the tub to pull out kind of hair or debris that may be caught in there. This sometimes works pretty well. Uh, this is another tool that might get in there and kind of catch on some hair to clean it out if need be. So, so far we have a lot of things that will uh, clean out some drains. This is off an old sink. It's a pea trap because it's kind of sort of shaped like a pea when you have all the parts to it. Um, and it traps water in it underneath your sink so the gases from the sewage don't go back into your house. A lot of times this might be where things get clogged and this is where you would send one of those tools through to try to help and clear that clog out. Um, these come off fairly easily if you drop something down the sink, so I have an extra one if needed. Some of these small parts are nice to have if something that you have breaks, so if you have them from a job, it would be good to hold on to them. And I kind of keep all those spare parts in some Ziploc bags that I may have. There are some um, washers and some fittings in here that will fit on these different types of pipes to seal because these pipes indeed need to be sealed, especially these plastic PVC pipes. This is all drain and sewage. Um, these go inside and they will seat on there to help seal that so water doesn't leak in your actual drain. These are just some spare parts that I have. Some good things to have would be um, a propane tank. This is pretty general. You should have that when you're uh, soldering or sweating copper pipe and having an extra scrap of half inch pipe, which is most common in most homes, are good to have. And I have some three quarter inch pipe as well, which is not too common, but it helps to have it. If you're going to have um, a copper pipe, you need to be able to cut it. And I have this small rigid one, which I actually like uh, for a couple reasons. It does open up all the way from small, it says quarter inch pipe to one and one eighth. So it's a wide range of piping that I could actually cut with this. Um, and it's small enough to fit around a pipe in a tight spot. You know, you, sometimes you're dealing with pipes that are um, in the walls or it could be under the sink and it's hard to get to and it's hard to kind of spin this, spin a larger one of these around. So that will actually cut the copper pipe. And then some extra copper fittings. Every time I do a job, I'll 
buy a couple of parts and it's nice to save and hold on to these. If I needed to add some pipe and make an elbow on it to adjust, I would clean and use the torch to kind of sweat that. And again, this came out of a sink. This is actually, you might recognize that. That's where the, the stop inside your sink goes. Um, that's basically the only visible part. The rest of this is below. This ends up going in your trap this way. There'll be another clamp on here that will actually hold that in place. The water sits in your trap. Um, and this is where you would need, here's my plumber's putty. It's pretty smashed right now. It almost looks like Play-Doh. There's some plumber's putty in there. It was at the bottom of my bag, so it got a little smashed. But it's still malleable. You kind of see that. And that would go under um, the drain of the sink to help seal it to the sink itself. I found my solder at the bottom of the bag that I would use with a torch to sweat solder. Those are all things general homeowner DIYers should have. It's nice to have these flexible supply lines too, okay? Um, it's pretty standard for uh, these connecting to like a sink or a toilet. They're pretty much the same size from underneath where you have the shutoff or the stop underneath your sinks or toilets. And they sell them in a lot of various sizes. And sometimes they fail or break over time. So having one or two extra um, when you have a leak at 10 o'clock at night and the stores are closed, you can go to your plumbing bag and use one that you have available. Back to tools. This here is a basin wrench, okay? When you're installing, you don't need to have this in your bag, but I happen to have a faucet from a sink that I took out and saved it in case I needed the parts for it. And you'll see underneath here, there are some plastic nuts that hold it to the sink itself. So this goes through the holes in the sink, and then it gets clamped here with these plastic nuts. Now, if you could imagine the sink itself coming around here, and then you have a vanity with some cabinet doors on it, it's gonna be hard to actually get at these. So the sink actually comes down for the bowl of the sink, and you would use a um, basin wrench to come up underneath your vanity and actually attach to some of these nuts that are behind there and loosen them up or tighten them if you were installing it. And it works on any faucet um, that has, they all have different types of nuts. These are plastic, so sometimes it's a little bit easier to grab onto, something that large. But sometimes there are steel or brass hex nuts on there that you would need something like this um, to attach to. And kitchen sinks, because they have a big, deep bowl, are hard to get at, and that's why it's important to have a basin wrench. This I happen to have. I don't expect everybody to have something like this. This is to connect a large um, PVC sewage line. If you had a cut or something, or sometimes you have to cut it to get at a clog that you might have, you could seal it with this and some hose clamps, but I would wait and buy that when you need it because that's a rare repair. Speaking of PVC, again, this is PVC. And um, sometimes, I don't know if I have it today, but I have a length of PVC that, uh, for making repairs. When you put them together, they don't have threads. You actually glue them with PVC cement. The purple one is a primer that helps clean it. And then this is just a PVC cement that you would use um, to actually glue the pipes together and it creates a watertight seal. So having some PVC cement holds, keeps PVC together. Solder keeps copper pipe together. Let's see. Here is the actual torch part of the propane tank. And that fits right on top of here. I don't keep it on there when I put it in the bag because if that breaks off, I can hear that it's on already. I don't want it leaking inside my bag inside my house so I put that on now but I take it off before I put that away Teflon tape I must have anytime you're threading something together um, if there's not a rubber kind of grommet if you look inside these these have a rubber grommet okay that's what seals water to from coming out so there has to be something that will actually seal. Threads themselves are not air or water tight. 
So if you're ever tightening threads, um, I think I have something that might be an example of that, where a fluid like air or water is going through, you would need to seal that with a Teflon like tape. And you can see I have an example of a T here I was using for a gas line. This is really just thread, it's brass on thread, which is not air or water tight. So you would wrap that Teflon tape, which would um, help to seal, and I would put this on and tighten that pretty snugly, and that would allow water or gas not to leak out of that. So Teflon tape, it's cheap, kind of see what it looks like. It's white, it's pretty thin and uh, flexible to help fill in those um, inconsistencies and threads to help see. Another thing that might also works outside of thread, uh, excuse me, Teflon tape, which is a thread sealant, is a paste thread sealant, sometimes called pipe dope, but it's a multi-purpose thread sealant. It does the exact same thing. You paint it around the threads and that will help seal any uh, fluids from coming out of it. Flux. Very little left and when I'm soldering I clean the pipe I add flux that helps keep the pipe clean and it helps the solder itself to flow to make a good watertight seal some of the flux or excuse me some of the solder itself has flux built in but it's good practice to um, have a little bit extra when needed I have a pipe wrench um, and it is what it's called. It does what it's called. It's a wrench for pipes. And that allows you to adjust some different size pipes. And you can see that it actually grips. And I could twist that pipe if needed. The other way it would slip. So I would go to the other side and tighten that. And it goes to all different types of sized pipes. Some of the more recent tools and materials that I had to add to my... Um, plumbing toolkit involves PEX piping. Um, there are pipes that supply water, generally copper or flexible lines um, are made out of generally copper and now we're switching to PEX pipe which is used for supply line as well. They come in different colors. Sometimes they use blue for cold or red for hot and they have white that could be used for either or. Um, the benefit of Hex piping over copper is it's a lot cheaper. The metal of copper is quite expensive. The price goes up and down and um, a 10 foot piece of copper pipe can run you probably um, 20 bucks at the store and for $20 I could get probably a hundred feet of PEX. So it's a little bit easier to work with when I have to actually cut this with this tool here and sweat it, clean it, sweat it for it to attach this I could use um, some PEX fittings. So I now have a PEX pipe and a bag full of some PEX fittings. These here are some crimp rings. I'll show you really quickly what they do. See this one is open so let's use this. You don't have to have every fitting. I kind of buy them as I need them and save the extras. So I have a T here, which would replace one of the copper T's that you see in here. This is a copper T, okay? And this is a PEX T. They basically do the same thing. This is a little more expensive because of the material and it has to be um, soldered or sweat, which could cause a problem if you're inside the wall that's made out of wood. Um, it could cause a potential for a fire. This I don't need to heat up. So what you would use is one of these PEX crimp rings and one of the fittings. You will slide the PEX crimp ring on there, put the fitting on all the way until it bottoms out and about an eighth of an inch away from the edge right there. I'm gonna use the new tool that I recently had to add to my um, collection here. 
and this is really the upfront cost. All the fittings and everything else are fairly cheap, but the tool itself might run you anywhere from maybe $20 to $50, depending on the tool you get. And this will crimp half inch and three quarter inch pipe. And I'm not gonna do it because then I lose the um, actual T. It looks like that might be my last T. But I would take it around that crimp ring and seal it all the way until that bottoms out. And that will make a very quick watertight seal. If I were running water to a sink or a hose outside, a hose spigot, or um, a shower itself. So um, I'm, I like PEX quite a bit just because of how easy and quick it is versus cutting copper and the cost uh, aside from this tool um, is pretty low. So this probably added to my toolkit uh, more recently than any other tool that you see here, but I'm glad I have it and you should have it in your toolkit as well. And that's what's in my toolbox, uh, plumbing version. Next time I'm gonna show you how to cut and sweat copper pipe, as well as compare it to cutting and crimping PEX pipe and some of the pros and cons of each. See you next time.